Greetings and welcome Life Gainers. It's your host Lamont Tyson and on this quest to find all the key people in the city that connect you to services, provide services, and help move Greensboro along, that quest has brought me here to the city manager of Greensboro, Mr. Jim Westmoreland. Mr. Jim? Good morning, Lamont. How are, How are you, you doing? man? Thank I'm doing you for fine. How are you doing much. today? I'm doing great. Looking forward to the uh, time with you this morning. Has it been a busy week for you? It has been. As I was telling you, there's always something new and different every day with things that I deal with in the city. And um, I run a very intense schedule here yes, in sir. terms of working both uh, during the day and have, like I said, a couple of commitments every night, um, it seems like, during the week. So. Um, it's been a great week. Lots of good things have happened for Greensboro uh, this week specifically. We had a, a pretty uh, significant um, issue yesterday that was resolved by the courts in terms of a redistricting bill of the yes, city sir. council and House Bill 263. Uh, we've had some other activities we participated in this week to move some key and important projects along in the city as well. Gotcha. A lot of people, Greensboro is one of North Carolina's top biggest cities. And a lot of people don't know exactly what the job is of a city manager. In a brief nutshell, kind of explain to people what life is like on a day-to-day -day basis and what it is that you do to progress the city. Okay, good. Uh, well, city manager's role is very interesting. Mm -hmm. um, I think a little bit of background about me. I started out with the city initially in 1996. I came mm -hmm. to the organization, worked in the transportation department uh, there for about 10 years. I was the DOT director for most of that time. Uh, then I switched over into city management, yes, and um, I can tell you that there's a real difference between being a practitioner and a department director versus being a city manager. And, and the thing mm -hmm. from a city manager's perspective that's different is I work in this unique space between our city council, who's the policy board of the organization, yes, and then serve effectively as the CEO and president of the organization, so all of the operational uh, components of the organization uh, effectively work to help serve the citizens underneath mm -hmm. my purview. Uh, every day is different. The mm -hmm. job is very diverse in terms of challenges and opportunities that are provided to me each and every day. Um, so there's always a different set of things that I'm dealing with. Um, sometimes there are public safety related issues. Yes, sir. Sometimes there are community related issues. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them are economic development related issues. Um, I have a real passion for this community and for the job that I do and, and you know one thing is I've thought about a question that you asked me before the interview about sort of how did I get to the point of, of public service. Yeah what made you what inspired you to want to do it? Yeah I think uh, as I sort of thought about that question uh, there's a couple of things that come to mind. One is um, I've always been fulfilled by being able to use my strengths and my talents to help other people. Yes, sir. And so, um, you know, I have spent time both in local government, state government, and the private sector, and um, I've always found that local government itself has provided me with the most ability to sort of ex express my uh, desires and my strengths and my talents. So you make a greater impact at the local government level. That's correct. From okay. a local government perspective, this really is where the rubber hits the road. Yes, sir. From the perspective that when things happen in this community, uh, when things happen to the city, uh, I have a real ability both in working with the council and working with the city staff team to be able to deploy resources uh, to help make a difference. And again, you know, a couple of examples there that are sort of near term <laughs> include things that happen within the community every day from a, from a public safety perspective. Uh, I'm able to work directly with our public safety team to respond to specific incidents that come up mm -hmm. and stay informed from that perspective. Uh, from an economic development perspective, um, I'm plugged into many of the existing as well as the companies that may be looking at prospecting for Greensboro, uh, currently working on directly uh, our team with some of the pursuits that we're looking at with the development of a mega site yeah. project down in Randolph County, which is very, very interesting. Working with the mayor and council on how we sort of do economic development differently going forward in the community. So the, the long story short is I have a real ability in this role to make a big difference on this community. Uh, and again, I mentioned I've worked in state government, I've worked in the private sector mm -hmm. before. Uh, those were all very rich, very fulfilling, very rewarding opportunities for me for many different reasons. But one thing that I found in how I gravitated back to Greensboro in October 2012 was I'm most fulfilled when I'm in this role with local government mm -hmm. and knowing that I really can do things and work with people 
to make a difference. So at the end of the day, um, uh, I'm a public servant leader, mm -hmm. I'm a problem solver, and I'm really connected with trying to help other people. And he, he's very tangible. He ba barely knew me from a hill of beans maybe two years ago, and here I sit discussing city issues with them, learning from them, and being able to take what I learned here to help build the community, and I'm very thankful for you for doing that Thank for you, me. Mark. And having said that, when you were young, who or what was it that inspired you or got you motivated to do some of the things you're doing currently? Oh, that's that's uh, pretty easy to answer. Uh oh, there, 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 well, there there have been many people uh, throughout my life, throughout my career, that have given me rich, rewarding, and fulfilling opportunities. Yes, sir. Um, but when you really look at sort of, you know, from a foundation perspective, how do I, how did I get to be where I'm at today and the things that sort of motivate me to be the person that I am? <clears throat> I, I, can, I can think of three things specifically. One is um, I grew up in a very, um, a very loving and a very uh, rewarding uh, family. Yes, sir. In terms of, you know, both my mother and father supported myself and my sister and anything that we wanted to get involved right. with and sort of challenged us to both take risk mm -hmm. and to look at how we helped other people along the way, understanding that it was always important to give back, if not more important to give back than it was to participate. Yes, sir. So from the standpoint of my family background and also from my upbringing in a church environment, yes, a Baptist sir. church environment, uh, it, it taught me a lot about um, who I am and how to sort of establish myself. From a work ethic perspective, um, I can tell you that my grandfather uh, mm -hmm. really sort of taught me early on about work and work ethic. Um, I can recall he his story was um, he came from, uh, grew up in Forsyth County, um, grew up on a farm, uh, basically was a self-taught plumber. Oh wow! Went down and worked in Wilmington in the shipyard back in uh, the day of World War II. Mm -hmm and effectively moved his family uh, from uh, Winston-Salem down to Wilmington, back to Winston-Salem where he opened up his own plumbing business back in the 1960s and did a lot of work there, was very successful. But the thing that taught me the most was I had the, the honor and opportunity to work with him oh. in the latter part of his career. So he was <laughs> probably in his early 60s and really sort of focused on a small number of clients in retirement. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was a young man of maybe seven or eight years old, and I would have the chance to go work with him on summer jobs. So that, that means he used his smarts and used your young energy to really help get things moving. That's it, but you know, the, the, thing that, the thing that was fun about that was not only spending time with him and learning from him, but really seeing how he tried to help other people, mm -hmm. seeing how he applied his skills to make a difference in their lives. Um, you know, as he used to joke with me, you know, plumbing is not a glamorous job. Right. But the fact of the matter is, typically when you get a plumbing call, it's sort of like local government, you're showing up and you're having to help somebody out that's in need. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a, you know, a broken water line, a stopped up drain or a toilet. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> those things are all important. They need to be working. Yeah. So he taught me a lot about that. He he uh, he would always, you know, from a work perspective, he always stuck with the job until he got it through. Mm. Uh, he would work extra hours to make sure that the problem was solved. Wow. So you know, I can recall on certain jobs we would get there like at twelve o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, he would stay until the problem was solved. If it took us working until you know nine or ten o'clock at night to get it done. If it took us working with the family to give them other kinds of accommodations until we could get the problem solved, he would do it. So, you know, that taught me a lot about sort of who I am and my work ethic from that perspective. The final thing is, uh, and I mentioned this before, I have had just a number of significant mentors along the way. Oh. Again, people who have made investments in me. Yes, sir. Uh, they saw the potential and have given me sort of their best time and talent and opportunities to be successful in different things. Yes, sir. Um, so it's, you know, it's one of these things that as I spend time in the organization, in the community, <laughs> I'm always looking for a way to connect with others and give back. Uh, we have a lot of, we have a lot of people in this community that have a lot to offer. Yes, sir. And sometimes all I need is just a person to connect with them and say, yeah. 
look, let's sit down and let me see how I can help you out. Absolutely. Um, and it's those little things that make a big difference. Uh, when people get connected, when they're given an opportunity, um, sometimes it's just the point of spending time with them, sometimes it's access, sometimes it's other kinds of resources that you can provide to them, but that whole element of mentors that I've had along the way and those who you know stay in contact with me now and I stay in contact with them uh, just means so much in terms of my growth and development. Absolutely. Wow. wow. I don't know how to follow up from that. <laughs> um, let's talk about personal obstacles you've had to overcome yeah. as a man yeah. um, in growing. Yeah. Uh, what have been, in your opinion, your two most challenging obstacles that you had to overcome? Yeah. Well, one's a personal thing, one's a professional thing. I'll start with the professional thing first. Yes, sir. Uh, professionally, I had an opportunity back in 2009. Uh, I received a call from the governor of the state of North Carolina, the Secretary of Transportation at the time, uh, asking me to come down and serve in the state DOT administration as a deputy secretary. Yes, sir. So at the time, I was an assistant city manager here. Um, so. Uh, as the story goes, when you get those kinds of opportunities, you really have to assess them and, mm -hmm. and jump on them when you can. So uh, I took um, both the governor and the secretary up on it, went down to Raleigh for about uh, four years. Yes, sir. So I served in the state DOT administration uh, for three years. So <laughs> the thing there was, um, I, it, it was a challenge professionally from the perspective of, of state government is a much larger um, arena mm -hmm. from the perspective of what you do, services, the people you work with, agencies. Um, so as I got into the role, um, there were several things that were uh, challenges to me, but they turned out to be very significant growth and development uh, pieces for me in terms of my leadership and my learning. Yes, and, and, you know, specifically uh, when I arrived down in 2009, um, I had the unique opportunity of working with um, the Secretary and Department in deploying uh, stimulus funding that came down from the Obama administration. Okay. And mm -hmm. so the first <laughs> year, year and a half in the role, I spent a lot of time going out to all 100 counties throughout the state and working with them in terms of mobilizing grants and providing resources. Gotcha. Um, that was good. It was a great learning opportunity. But you know, one of the things that was interesting to me in that role, I also had an opportunity to work on some specific. Uh, agreements related to deployment of resources for the rail line in between Raleigh and Charlotte. So gotcha. the state had received about a half a billion dollars and effectively I had to work as the lead representative for the state mm -hmm. with a team uh, up in Washington DC and it took us about six months to pull this together Yes, sir. Um, which was an agreement between um, uh, the DOT, Norfolk Southern North Carolina Railroad Company, FRA, and Amtrak. Anyway, um, it was, a, it was a challenging uh, work item. Uh, it turned out to be successful, um, and it provided me with a lot of growth and opportunity from that perspective. But th the, the point I'll make about it from the standpoint of the state DOT is, again, um, you know, what was initially challenging was going into a totally different environment, arena, mm. something I wasn't familiar with, uh, where I had to figure out pretty quickly um, where my networks and my relationships and my support resources existed. Yes, sir. Um, because unlike unlike the city of Greensboro that I know very well, the organization that I know very well, the community that I know very well, it was a totally different environment. And so you had to galvanize people from Washington, D.C. along <laughs> with everything right. you had to do to hunker down here in the state. Right. So, um, you know, it was it was interesting. It taught me a lot about um, myself yes, sir. from the standpoint of leadership, from the standpoint of how to work uh, relationships differently mm -hmm. and to understand that, you know, when you're dealing with a broader constituency base like that, um, that there's many additional stakeholders that need to be brought to the table to help come up with the right solution from time to time. Absolutely. So that's the professional thing. Right, right. <laughs> the personal thing was uh, I had um, a, a loss in my family about oh. two years ago. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, I appreciate that. Uh, the, the, my, my father was an avid cyclist. He had ridden bicycles for like 30 plus years and um, uh, we were down at the beach for the 4th of July, which we typically as a family have done that for many years now. So this was 
July 4th of 2013, a yes, couple sir. of years ago. And had a great experience down there. And um, my wife and I left on a, on a Tuesday to come back for a United Way board meeting I had on that following Wednesday. Yes, anyway, sir. Uh, I received a call at 8.30 in the morning, and I'll never forget 8.30 in the morning on Wednesday morning, uh, July the 10th, and July the 10th just happens to be the uh, uh, my mother's birthday as well, oh, so Wednesday man. morning, July the 10th, uh, 2013. Yes, sir. And it was a call from the Grand Strand Regional Hospital in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. So my father had been involved in a bicycle accident. Yes, sir. Uh, effectively had um, gone into a state of cardiac arrest at the scene. Yes, sir. It took them 15 minutes to revive him, so he came back and uh, effectively he was on life support for a couple of days. Oh, goodness. Um, but anyway, the, 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 the challenge there was, you know, I, I had never had such a significant loss mm -hmm. in my life. And, um, you know, just thinking about all the things that uh, have come to me since then, things I've had to deal with, um, you know, but like with I said before, it, with every challenge comes a whole new subset of opportunities and, yes, and, and rewards. And, you know, one thing that I found throughout the experience was there was a lot of things that were new to me that I had to deal with, uh, but the reward was all of the support that mm -hmm. I received from everybody, mm -hmm. uh, both within the family, within the community, within the environment here that helped me get through that time. Mm -hmm. um, and then also really just sort of understanding, um, you know, where I'm at personally in terms of, of my desires to do even more to give back to people, mm -hmm. to understand that every moment that you have to spend with your loved ones is so extremely important. Yes, sir. That you never know when the next day is going to be the last day. Mm -hmm. uh, and that you need to cherish all of those memories um, all the time. And just, just understand that, uh, again, uh, those, those personal challenges uh, are difficult when you're going through them, mm -hmm. uh, but you'll get through them. Mm -hmm. And um, you, know, you just have to understand that, that there's, there's things that come from those experiences that are positive. So well, when, you, when you meet those rigorous challenges, yeah. look at it as an opportunity to grow as well. Right. Look, look past the despair and know that there's opportunity for growth once you can get past those right. barriers. Right. Yeah. That's right. Wow. And that brings me to the topic of what do you see have been the most pressing barriers for Greensboro growing um, in all areas that a city needs to grow? Yeah, well, there's a, there's a couple of things that I've thought about with that. One is, um, one is just from the perspective of the economics of Greensboro. Yes, sir. And again, I came to the city first in 1996. When I first arrived on the scene, Greensboro still had six corporate textile corporations here. Oh, yeah. um, Jefferson Pilot was still a corporate entity. Um, our tax base growth in our economy was growing at probably four and a half to five percent per year. Oh, wow. Anyway, all of that changed in the late 1990s. Mm -hmm. um, there was a federal law that was put into place. A lot of the textile companies started um, taking their manufacturing operations from North America down to Mexico and other mm. places in South America. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, a lot of the textile companies changed or merged. So um, from the standpoint of, of growth and development in the community, we lost a wealth of corporate leadership, corporate benevolence in terms mm -hmm. of resources that were pulled into the community, and then just overall growth. So our tax base in the early 2000s went down to 1% or less per year. Wow. So, uh, you know, we had an economic situation and crisis that we went through in the early 2000s that was preceding anything to happen with the Great Recession in 2008. And a lot of people wouldn't even know about that. Yeah, so we, we had a very, um, you know, for the past 10 to 15 years now, we've had a very significant economic challenge that we've been facing in terms of issues of increasing population base, mm -hmm. um, stagnant or decreasing revenues to a certain degree. Yes, sir. Um, there's been changes at the federal and state levels that have impacted uh, us from an economic perspective, from a revenue perspective. <laughs> so it's been, it's been challenging uh, in terms of the um, point of the economics of the community. I think that things are 
getting better now though yeah. which is always a good a good sign we've see we've had a couple of years now with some uh, more positive revenue growth in terms of our tax base in terms of our sales tax revenues um, Greensboro seems to have a lot of energy and momentum building around things that we're doing with development and economic development right, uh, right. both downtown and yeah. with the businesses in the community um, myself and council are spending some time this year going around to visit uh, some of our bigger and smaller companies in the community and uh, we're getting very positive indications from most if not all those companies about their plans for the future in Greensboro and what that means for both our city for our region um, so those are all um, those are all positive things that are happening from that point of view with economic development well I, I seen on TV not too long ago the Charlotte the Hornets now yeah come to town potentially want to use Greensboro as a site for the NBA D League yeah how's all that going well I think it's going well uh, we have submitted our proposal to the Hornets uh, their president and leadership team made a visit up here a couple of weeks ago mm -hmm. um, you know we have proposed a option for them that would look at transforming a space that we have the Coliseum complex into sort of a very unique venue with support facilities around it mm -hmm. uh, that would be specifically sort of made for the Charlotte Hornets. Uh, it would give us sort of an interesting connection with both professional sports Absolutely. and a different sort of profile within the city, something we could continue to be proud of. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that's, you know, that's uh, uh, positive. I don't really know what their timeline is in terms of follow-up. Yes, sir. Uh, I know that they want to be operational by sometime in 2016. So from our timing perspective, um, something would have to be known probably in the next couple of months for us to be able to both mobilize the contracts and the, the planning work and the implementation to a higher level. So uh, you know, we remain hopeful. Our Coliseum team does a great job. Uh, we host a lot of different uh, national events at the Coliseum Arena, the, mm -hmm. the Greensboro Aquatic Center. Uh, that beautiful ACC uh, uh, memorial that you guys have, yeah, the just, Hall of Champions just there beautiful. Cool. And, and yeah, we're, we're blessed too in this community, speaking of the ACC, that we have the uh, corporate headquarters of the ACC here in Greensboro yeah. and have a lot of unique uh, relationships and partnerships established with them in terms of both sports as well as how we work with them directly from the community perspective. And just thanking you for all your time. I know how yeah. busy you are. Yeah. I feel special and privileged that you allowed me to come and do this to get to know you and what you're doing a little better. And I got two more loaded questions for yeah. you, yeah. and then we'll go ahead and get you on the off ramp. The, <laughs> the first, the first part of that question is, when you finally decide that you want to hang your hat up on the city of Greensboro and being a manager, yeah. what is the legacy you would like to see left from the time you've been city manager? I think from from my perspective, uh, what's important to me, and I really focus on the city and the city organization with a lot of what I do. We've got a great city team here. We've got a great organization. Uh, we can always improve and, and become better than we are. Yes, sir. But you know what I would like to leave in the way of a legacy would be nothing about uh, me. It would be all about this organization. Leave mm -hmm. this organization in a place that is very stable. It's known for our effective operations. It's known for our innovative employees. Uh, at the end of the day, if you benchmark us against any other city in the state, you'll find out that A, you get great value for your investment here with the city. Yes, sir. Uh, but B, you also um, have a city team here that works about, that cares for this community. And every day that we are here, we really try to strive to provide both exceptional and high quality services to the people that we serve. So, to me, if I have anything uh, to do with that and how I drive the organization forward, uh, that's most important to me. Uh, certainly, I think the other thing that uh, I would like to continue to focus on is the element of how we better uh, communicate and tell our story. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, we talked about just a minute ago some of the challenges of Greensboro, and I think from my perspective, a lot of what I see is we have so many assets here we have mm -hmm. so many strengths that we don't do a good job of communicating or branding or putting out there for 
the community and for the state and for the world to understand what Greensboro has to offer. Um, so we need to we need to do a better job of that in terms of focusing on our strengths in the areas that tie us together. Uh, we spend, we tend to spend a lot of time uh, focused on issues or things that don't unite us. Yes, sir. And so I think that in the future, and from the standpoint of making the organization and community better, um, that's a strong point that I want to continue to provide some input and some leadership on as well. Gotcha. And my very last question, because inquiring minds want to know, yes. is there ever an opportunity or a chance that we might see Mr. Westmoreland in state politics or federal politics? Well, um, you know, uh, I, I don't. I don't know. Um, yes, sir. And, and what I mean by that is, is I serve as a city manager. I'm the lead professional staff here with the city. Mm -hmm. So I'm not elected. I serve as an appointed professional staff employee of the city council. Okay. Um, so I've never held an elected office, other than uh, uh, when I was serving on the judicial board with NC State University when I was there. <laughs> that was, a, that was, a, that was a, a, a fun and unique experience. My freshman year at NC State, uh, they had student government elections, and I, I uh, put my name in the it gave you a little bit of experience. The judicial board, so you know, I, I ran in a in a <laughs> campus wide or a, at a university wide uh, election process and was voted on to the judicial board and my role for the year that I served was to uh, be involved in hearing parking appeals and complaints. So oh, I, yeah, that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole nother show for us to talk yeah. about with that. But um, no, uh, you know, I, I have, again, I want to continue whether it's um, Greensboro or the state or wherever, uh, I think I'll always stay focused on continuing to use and apply my skills and talents to give back to others um, and you know if if anything uh, down the road is appealing to me whether that's professional or politically where I feel I can make a difference uh, it's certainly something that I'll give strong consideration to um, I think in this role and with my experience both in the private sector and with state government <clears throat> I have a lot of knowledge about how to get things done, how to solve problems. Yes, sir. And again, like we started out with, you know, what drives me is an ability to give back. Gotcha. And to use those skills most constructively and, and effectively to help other people. So uh, that's where I'm going to stay focused. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I, I'm certainly blessed to have, again, a, a, a lovely wife, a great family, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, try to try to keep my balance with that as well and that's important from the perspective of really being successful in the future. It is. Well Life Gainers, understanding how crucial the role of having great leaders in any organization is paramount to its success and on this day we had the opportunity to spend a lot of time with a great leader. Mr. Jim, thank you for your time. Thank you Lamont. I really appreciate well, thank it. Thank you.